Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Today we want to kind of look at some of the best practices or preferred methods when traveling with our refrigerant tanks. We all have different kinds of trucks. Some, some of us drive trucks, some of us have vans, uh, some of us have something that looks a little bit in between the two, but nonetheless, we have to carry our refrigerant cylinders and we want to make sure we do that safely. If you look on the, the front of that, you'll notice that there's a DOT uh, and, an, and an AR700 specification on that. The Department of Transportation has some pretty specific rules as to how we're to safely carry um, and transport our refrigerant. As a technician, you want to make sure that you're current on all of your e 608 EPA certifications when it comes to handling refrigerant of whatever class, be that type one, type two, type three, or for those of us that are universal, you fall under all of those. Now, once we've gone onto a job, one of the things that we have to do is make sure that when we're taking our tanks off of our truck, we understand a few things. Number one, it's cooling season, so it's more than likely it's pretty hot outside. And once we start to reach t temperatures over 100 degrees, um, our refrigerant inside of our tanks has a has the tendency to want to try to expand at that point. And so we have to be careful of that. Also, depending on the type of refrigerant, we could be talking about some pretty intense pressures that go along with those tanks. So when we get out and we're getting ready to charge and our cylinders have been sitting on the sun um, for a long period of time or in a hot inside of a hot van where the temperature outside is 100 degrees and it could be even hotter inside. We want to maybe take our tanks out, set them underneath a, sh a tree while we're doing some of our other um, checks on our system, kind of give that thing to come time to come down and the temperature to drop a little bit just for safety precautions. The other thing that we want to do is once we finish with that, our, our tank, we want to go ahead and load that back onto the truck. Now, people have all different types of storage methods. Um, and I don't know what yours may look like, but one of the things that I would recommend is that you definitely want to secure and strap your tank down so that it doesn't roll, it doesn't move. We don't have something that accidentally hits one of the valves and then we have refriger refrigerant leaking out. Um, remember, refrigerant has some oxygen, um, oxygen depleting um, uh, properties to it. And so um, if we're in a tight space and there's refrigerant leaking, that could become very dangerous for us and we wanna be very careful of that. So making sure that nothing can mess with the valves or, or anything like that. Nothing can get in, that, in the way of that. Nothing can you know, disturb the tank and that you can transport them safely over bumps, over railroad tracks and different things. Although it seems very small in nature, um, it's something that we need to pay attention to when we're transporting refrigerant. The other thing is someone asked about MSDS sheets. Well, I always would say let, in that situation, we're gonna err on the side of caution and if we have refrigerant or any other chemical solvents on our truck, that we could have the MSDS sheets there as a safety, as a backup, so that we always know exactly what it is that we're traveling with. It's just a few things that we need to do to make sure that we transport refrigerant safely. But if we take those steps and we take those extra precautions, we can make sure that we mitigate and possibly even eliminate any accidents that could potentially happen while transporting refrigerant. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Um, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.